Okay, so this is Pi News episode 13, and I'm using a Pi 400 for the first time. Uh, I've got an SD card adapter because my SD card slot doesn't work, but I'll cover that separately in another video. So let's get down to the news. So first up is Twister OS, and Twister OS has had loads of updates recently, uh, and there was a big one very recently. So version 1.9.1, if we have a look at the change log, uh, so updated the Mesa Vulkan driver, uh, so this is 3D graphics support, and it keeps getting better. Uh, I tried it in yesterday's Munkajaro video, and it's definitely improving all the time. Uh, updated Wine to use the new Mesa Vulkan driver, which is excellent news. Uh, and this other really big one here, updated Chromium and Chromium Media Edition, because one of the updates to Chromium stopped Chromium Media Edition working, which is the way you get things like Spotify and Netflix and Disney Plus. Uh, because of Widevine support, it stopped working, and that's been patched already. So they, they really get on these updates very, very quickly. And now, with the built-in patcher, uh, so if you just start typing patch, you can just update it with the patcher, and it's super simple. So next up, uh, I had this email today, so I'm glad I checked the email uh, before I started doing Pi News, because uh, sometimes I don't check them and I miss something key. Uh, so DeSalvo Systems, now I've covered uh, the two aluminium cases that I've been sent before, and they are absolutely amazing, lovely, lovely pieces of kit. Uh, this is made out of solid copper, uh, so you might want to sit down before you see the price, but it is a real work of art, and uh, if we flick through the photos, it just looks amazing. And copper has incredible cooling properties, so this is going to keep the, the pine nice and cool. So you can see here, it just, it just looks incredible. Uh, it really is a lovely looking case. Obviously, you know, people may question the cost of the pie going in there and things like that, but you know, it's nice that people go the extra yard and do these things. So next one up is something I got offered from 52 Pi, um, but I declined only because I don't really do a lot of the maker stuff, uh, and I didn't really know how I would do a good video out of it because it's just not my thing. I, I prefer covering games and software and things like that. Some maker things I'll, I'll have a look at, but uh, it, it's I don't do an awful lot with the GPIO pins, but uh, I'm sure some of you will be interested in this. So it's got LED lights on it and it's got like a, a GPIO riser. This is a very beautiful screw terminal expansion version, which is expanded for the pins of the Raspberry Pi. It is convenient for everyone to connect when doing electronic experiments. There is the pinout information of the GPIO pin on the top of the terminal and on the side. The status information of the pin is displayed. When the GPIO pin is operated and effective in the terminal, the LED matrix on the right side of the terminal will display the status of the GPIO pin and some distinctions are made in the color selection of the LED lights. For example, the 5 volt power light is red while the 3.3 volt power light is pink. Have a look through it if you think it's for you. It's not really for me, but I figured I'd cover it. They did offer to send me one, but I, I, uh, I did decline because there's no point in me having things I'm not going to use or make a good video out of. Eben Upton has been on a couple of podcasts and there's been some really good ones. So this one was on Hackster.io, so I recommend checking that out. It goes on for an hour, but there's all sorts of great information in there about the Pi 400 and uh, the heatsink and all sorts of things. Really, really good video. Uh, worth watching. And uh, also the PiCast had Evan Upton on again. They've had him on before and obviously the Pi 400 was a major thing. I didn't know about the Pi 400 when it came out and uh, I was a bit slow on the uptake and it took me a while to get there but uh, it got great coverage. I mean I was seeing all sorts of people cover it and news organisations and all sorts of things. So yeah, good news for the Raspberry Pi Foundation because uh, it's a big profile for them and it can only be good for us Pi users in the future. So DOSBox Pure for RetroArch, so that'll show up in RetroPi as well. Run DOS games directly from zip files and it does look really interesting and you can see Quake running here uh, and it looks like it's running pretty well. I won't play any more of that video because uh, I'll link to it, but uh, yeah, great information on that. And the last one was an amazing uh, water-cooled Pi 4. Uh, so as it says in the title, totally unnecessary, but pretty awesome. Uh, it does look incredible. So let's go on a bit. Was it a Pi 4? Yeah, it is a Pi 4. Uh, and obviously I'm not going to show the video. You need to watch the video. So there's all these stands and pipes and fans and all sorts of things. And near the end... Yeah, so you can see here with the pipes coming off it, uh, it does look really impressive. And uh, I wonder if I can get a, a more zoomed out shot. Yeah, this one's nice. Look at that. 
I mean, that, that really is, uh, well, a bit like uh, De Salvo, you know, this is going above and beyond. Uh, here we go, there's a, there's a fully zoomed out shot. Anyway, check out that. I'll put links in the description to all of these as well. So this is running from an SD card. I'm running Twister OS, uh, but this is the version uh, that uh, I think it was Munker sent me. I've got a video about it separately. Uh, and if I go to Windows 10 VM and open in a terminal, just to show um, this is the only version of Windows 10 I've had running on the Raspberry Pi 400. It runs fine on the Raspberry Pi 4, but uh, the normal WOR versions of Windows 10 don't seem to run on the Pi 400. And you can see it loads in the normal way. Uh, I don't know if there is a way of making the screen bigger, but I would I would imagine it would affect performance to to go bigger than this sort of resolution. Okay, so let's log in. Uh, I think the password was Pi. So you can see from the bottom here, this is running in a virtual machine, so QMU. Uh, but if I click on the Windows symbol and something like Settings, you can see it is slow but it's impressive to see this working uh, on the Pi 400. Uh, so system and about, there we go, 1.8 gigahertz, three processors, two gig of RAM. This is a four gig obviously in the Pi 400, but that's how it does this. And the last thing I wanted to cover, uh, so I sent this image to 52 Pi. Uh, so my idea was a Raspberry Pi 400 with a fan uh, and also an SSD or an M.2 drive uh, inside it. And I thought, because there'd be a load of space here, uh, and I thought maybe you could have SD card storage, or if you've got any other ideas, uh, pop them in the comments. Uh, but I, I don't know how much difference the fan is gonna make uh, because of where it is, and obviously the big heat sink on there, but I thought if you were gonna have a big amount of space, it'd be nice to have one. Maybe with a switch as well, so you can turn on the fan if you need it, but you can also have it nice and silent, uh, but that could obviously run off the GPIO pins. Uh, one of the USB 3 connections could run an M.2 or a SSD drive, which I thought would work quite nicely. I also thought it would be nice if it was slightly tilted forward, maybe like someone like a Commodore 64 or something like that. But let me know what you thought in the comments. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.